Welcome to the MBU Football Coaches Show. My name is Guy Danoff. I'm here with Coach B. Coach, you have the this Saturday night game against the Wildcats of Culver Stockton. A close game. Some would say a heartbreaker. Um, as the Spartans fell so short, 33 to 30 in overtime. But the Spartans mounted a 10 point deficit in the fourth quarter. So with that, kind of give us your reaction to the game. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. It was a heartbreaker. You know, I think yeah. as coaches, um, as a staff, we wanted that really bad for our guys. They put in a lot of work, um, gave themselves a position, like you said, um, came back from being down 10 points in the fourth quarter, fought uh, right up until the end. We had some chances to win it. We just didn't make those plays, but was really proud of the overall effort. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think after the game, I didn't really say much to the guys because I looked around and you could see in their faces how uh, upset they were. They knew that they had that um, game and that was a game that we could have won. But, you know, like you said, we, there was a lot of good that came out of it. Yep. And, and as a staff, that was something that we really want to make sure our uh, our guys understood is that although the outcome isn't what we want, we wanted want to make sure that we know what the expectation is and they do know what the expectation is and I think that's why they were so heartbroken from it but that there was a lot of good that came out of it and, and things we can build off of absolutely I mean at halftime uh, you're actually leading 17 to 14 talk yeah. to us about the first half well you know I think there was just some some plays that happened in that first half that really opened the door to let Culver Stockton get back in the game you know we started out really well started out um up 10 nothing, and, and again had the opportunity to be up maybe even 14 nothing. Uh, a couple of special teams mishaps gave them some field position and then defensively we didn't do as good of a job as what we have early in the season about holding teams to field goals uh, you know we did get some stops but uh, you know just little things I think the thing that we've talked about is that when when we have to make a play we need to make that play and you know not take any plays off and you know, I think again that I'm I'm proud of how the guys played, but yeah, we were we were at 17-14, um, and then the third quarter there was a, a few drives where we let them uh, hit explosive plays on us defensively and things we've got to be a little bit better at. But um, you know, give the offense credit they they held us in the game and continued to make plays, put up a lot of yards, and um, you know, is like what I told the defensive guys after. Uh, on Monday when we were watching film is the way I see it is that it's kind of a one one and one type situation you know week one defense played great the offense um, you know couldn't quite get going right. and, and this was a week where everything flips and that's something that we have to just keep in mind with this game is that the offense kept us in it and defensively we weren't as sharp so we just got to uh, get to where we're putting all three phases together and um, you know good things are still on the on the horizon for this team. Absolutely. Anytime, obviously, your offense puts up 30 points, it's obviously a great game. You know, what was, you know, I want to get your reaction because it, it really felt like just a couple plays, some miscues on really the special teams, um, whether it was, you know, kind of the line drive kick. And then, of course, the kick or the punt return, which has kind of been a sore spot really for the team, is, the, is that fumble that gave them insane field position. But I mean, again, you look at that, the offense though was clicking on all cylinders and it's just unfortunate that they, that they got those kind of opportunities again from, as you would say, the lack of execution. Yeah, and that's something that we've worked a lot on. You know, Coach Rochford spends a lot of time with those guys on special mm -hmm. teams and we put a lot of emphasis on special teams. So I think, you know, for him, it's it's very discouraging when those things happen. He takes that personally and, and uh, you know, a lot of the guys do as well. And, and honestly, I, I love that they care that much yeah. about it. You know, I think the biggest thing is, is that everybody just has to really trust and own their job, whatever that is, whether it's special teams and that's all they're on or whether they're playing offense or defense and special teams. It's, you know, it's something that is very critical. It's important. We've got to know, you know, the, the details of the game. And I think the one thing that we're seeing is that due to injuries and stuff like that, right. we're playing a lot of young guys. And um, something that I just keep reminding the team and reminding the staff is that, you know, as you have older guys in some of these teams that we're playing, they have juniors and seniors, you know, right. throughout. And, and we started that way, but due to injuries with guys like Jeremiah and guys like Gio, you know, we're playing some young guys that don't have a lot of experience. Right. And there's a lot of that, as uh, Coach Bowden, who used to be here, as he would say, that OJT, right, that on-the-job training. Yep. And, um, you know, unfortunately, that there's – 
some negative plays that come with that, but it gives us an opportunity to teach and learn and, uh, you know, just continue to develop these young players because we're going to need them. And that's something we talked about early in the season is we're going to need everybody, and, and we're seeing that right now. So, you know, talk us through what it was like. You fought, you really fought really hard. You actually held them just to three points in the fourth quarter, which is why I think a lot of us are thinking, yeah, you're going to pull it off, you're going to pull it off. But walk us through the fourth quarter. I thought it was interesting. You waited, let time expire before you take the kick. Um, I thought I, I thought it was brilliant, to be honest. I, I thought it was great because you're like, okay, this is it. You know, we're going to win or lose, right? And then knowing that you're going to play for the overtime, kind of walk us through that part of the process because I thought it was really interesting how you manage the game effectively. Well, we knew going into that last drive that um, it was a, we wanted to make sure that it was a situation where we had – the opportunity to win the game or send it to overtime right. um, you know if, if obviously things don't go through then then you know we're, we're going to lose the game because we weren't ahead but right. um, you know we, we were very confident in our offense they played well all night uh, so we felt like hey you know we're going to either win the game or send it in overtime but mm -hmm. we're not going to give them an opportunity to get the ball back right. so we wanted to make sure we were using the clock treating it like a four minute situation um, which we practice every week and spend a lot of time on and I thought offensively they did excellent you know we we get a, a holding penalty early in a drive yep. that puts us behind the sticks a little bit you know and we moved the ball all the way down the down the field uh, honestly had an opportunity with uh, first and goal at the three to to really do some things and you know that's one of those situations where we've got to be at our best and frankly on that first down we we didn't we had a couple guys uh missed our block unfortunately put us in a first and five and then we just missed the throw on second down but we had some opportunities to go win it right um and then obviously uh, jo uh, jonah did a nice job making the kick to send us into overtime and then in overtime we just um, had a guy that was confused on what his job was, unfortunately. So, you know, that's something that I, I said in front of the team, that that is, that's on me. I will own that, that um, there should be no reason why when we get in that situation that guys aren't 100% sure on what's going on. So we have to, right. you know, just drill down. Like I told the staff, you know, we can never assume that somebody knows what to do. It's our job to make sure that, that we're very crystal clear in what it is. Um, and when we sat down on Monday, it was clear he wasn't clear. And so, you know, we just have to do a better job as a staff and make sure that, that when we hit those situations, whatever it is, that everybody knows exactly what their job is. All right, my final question for this game was, you talked about that second down play. It almost looked like an NFL play where you were rubbing against the receivers. And, well, and, 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 he, seemed, and he seemed wide open, right? I well, mean, at least yeah. that's what we saw. No, Cam was wide open. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, they brought in edge pressure. And okay. so uh, Jordan maybe hurt his throw just a little bit. Yeah. And it was just out of reach of Cam. But, yes, he was open. Rub routes are illegal, so we don't rub, run rub routes. But uh, there might have been something to it. Um, where, you <laughs> sorry, know, we got sorry that's confused. the old school in me. I'm so sorry. That's <laughs> the old school we, in we me. We confused the defense. There you go. Like Fair enough. But, yeah, right, right, no, right. He, uh, he was definitely <laughs> open. And uh, um, we just, like I said, just out, out – off the fingertips and, yeah. and and a close play, but you know those are plays that we've got to make. Right, um, we've got to not miss a block on on first down, and then ultimately on third down, make sure that we're um, giving our guys an opportunity to go win it. But um, you know, I give a ton of credit to the offense. They they moved the ball all yeah. the way down the field, uh, put us in position because we were sitting at third and long, and you know we were having conversations of do we you know kick Odie for a sixty-one yarder to tie it if we have to, and Cam Sloan did an excellent job finding the open hole and yeah. getting the first down on that third and long. Yeah, that that was such that was such a beautiful drive. I mean, and I think that's why I know for those of us that were watching, we we're just so excited and thinking, man, just punch it in, punch it in, punch yeah. it in because. It was one of the best drives, certainly, of the year. All right, let's talk about your upcoming opponent as it's going to be homecoming. Homecoming 2023. You know what this place is like. There's going to be over 1,000 people here. Obviously, Spartan Nation will be in full support of the Spartans. Uh, I know our team right now is 0-3, is but we've also said that very easily, within a play or two, you could easily be 2-1, right? Yeah, and that's that's a message I sent to the team on Monday um, when in our team meeting that we have every Monday. Is, yeah. 
you know, I, I put up three numbers, seven, two, and one. And, okay. and what that stood for was we're seven points away from being two and one. Right. So, you know, we've got to keep our heads up. we got to continue to work. We have to find ways to win. And I think that's the biggest thing with uh, young guys and guys in general that, you know, they, they've got to believe, they've got to have the confidence that through their preparation, through um, what, they're, what they've put in, that they are good enough and are going to go win. You know, it can't be a I hope, it's a I know. Right, And, right. Um, you know, that's, that's a mindset. That's a mindset that we've got to uh, continue to develop and continue to recruit guys with that mindset that says, you know, I, I just refuse to lose. And we're, you know, not quite there yet. You know, I think uh, there's a bunch of guys in that locker room that are that are developing that mindset. Um, and and we've got some young guys that, that have that and they're just starting to right. make an impact. So that's that's what we've got to do. I mean, this is a good football team coming in um, They're Oh, and three or oh, and four oh, yeah, and four oh, and four. Um, but they're very similar to us. They've lost a game in overtime. They've lost a game by one or two points. They, yeah. um, you know, they've given up some leads that have turned into losses. And and then uh, most recently they played Benedictine, who is is top twenty five ranked, and they're a good program. So, um, you know, they're going to be hungry for a win. We're going to be hungry for a win. Ultimately, we've got to protect our home field. Understand that we've uh, that this is a special place. It's it's a great atmosphere to come in and yep. play, and we've got to go and put on a show. So give us some key matchups to look at. I would just say this from looking at the scouting report. What I see is they have a Division One transfer uh, yeah, who yeah. seems to be a game changer. And talk to us a little bit about him, what you've seen on film. Yeah, number one, their wide receiver. He's uh, you know, he's pretty dynamic in the special teams game. Uh, has, in I want to say against Mid-America, returned two punts for touchdowns. Yep. Um, you know, he can make the big play at, at the wide receiver position. So, you know, he's a guy that want to get the ball in, in his hands. They want to... Uh, allow him to find different ways to get him the ball. Um, they've got a number of transfers on their team from big schools. Uh, you know, their quarterback was most recent, recently at Hutchinson right. uh, Junior College in Kansas, which is one of the top junior colleges in the Jayhawk League. They played for a national title last year. Yep. He's now there uh, as their quarterback. He's a really good player. Um, they've got an offensive lineman that's huge. He's a Texas Tech transfer. And they've got guys from all over, a lot of transfers. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that we have to do is just control us. Like, yep. it, you know, to, to me, one of the things, and, like, I, I mean this with all respect, but the thing that I've told these guys is, like, look, they're not – we're not playing Texas Tech. We're not playing Hutchinson right. Junior right. College. Right. You know, we're right. playing Peru State. Right. And, you know, they're there for a reason, just like you're here for a reason. Right. And, and, you know, we've got good players. They've got good players. And at the end of the day, that ball's kicked off. We've got to go and control what we can control, and that is, you know, doing our job at the highest level possible and being more consistent in how we execute. And we do that, I, I, you know, I think – uh, combined with that idea that it's that we refuse to lose, we're going to be successful. You know, I have no doubt about that. But um, you know, it's it's going to be one of those games. It's not going to be one of those. Well, you it's a walk in the park. You're going to blow that out. But that's how this league is built. I think any team can beat anybody on any given weekend. And, right. And uh, it's just who's going to do the little things and execute at the highest level. So, kind of like my last question is this. Uh, you know, I know the first week the offense sputtered, but. In week two, um, you know what the when we went up against the number three school in the country, it was the most points ever put up against a top five ranked opponent in MBU football history. Uh, and now you just came off of thirty points. So how are they? How's the offense feeling? And certainly, are there any new wrinkles going into this week's game plan? Well, there's no new wrinkles. We just do what we do. Okay. You know, um, we're not gonna. You know, I think what we've got to do is just continue to develop confidence in. Yep. Uh, our offensive scheme with the with the players make sure that they're confident in what they do I think uh, both sides of the ball you can get caught up in hey you know we see this we're going to go make this change this week but then what it ends up happening is is then you know you spend a lot of time working on something that's new and you try it it doesn't work it gets scrapped you're back to your base anyway right. so I think at the end of the day you've got to be really good at what you do um, on on every phase of the game so um I think the offense continues to get confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously every week they're getting a little more confident in what they're doing. Jordan's getting a little more confident in the system and who's right. around him, uh, around him rather. And you know, I think the receivers are getting more confident in Jordan. Yep. Um, and 
we'll see what we'll see what happens. But you know they've done a really good job. They continue to get better and better. And defensively, I'd, I'd say the same thing. Even though we have some newer guys up on the defensive line, we've shuffled some things around. But um, you know some of the guys we've moved to the defensive line have done a really good job. Yeah. And we just gotta make sure in the back end that we hold up. You know I think. Uh, you know our corners and safeties that they're they're very talented and they just got to trust that they're good enough and, and work the technique that we work every day and um, you know that we'll be successful so uh, I guess here's my final comment you being obviously a defensive coach can't wait to hear your reaction <laughs> but this defense uh, of, uh, of Peru State they seem to like to play man I would think that open up maybe some possibilities well, it does. They, I think they've got a guy who's a two-time All-American and two-time uh, Heart of America Defensive Player of the Year on their defensive line. So, right. you know, that opens a lot of possibilities up for you. And, and obviously, if you can play man and get four-man pressure, which, right. which he does a lot, you know, I mean, he, he commands a double team. It, it opens things up for them to get pressure on your quarterback with four men. Uh, that gives you a lot of options in playing man-to-man -man coverage, obviously. And when you've yep. got guys that can go and, and hold up and play man-to-man -man effectively, um, but there's no doubt it does. It puts uh, pressure on the quarterback to make throws. It puts right. pressure on the wide receivers to make sure that they're getting separation. Um, and, you know, maybe a little few wrinkles of how to, you know, you're starting to run your man-beater route concepts and those right. kind of things. But, you know, it, if, if I'm a receiver – and, and I'm an offensive player, man, I would love to see man, mm -hmm. you know, because now it's how good am I versus how good are you and, and go win your individual battle and, right. and go from there. So, you know, I think it's a really exciting week. It's a challenging week because, you know, it, it, you find out really quickly, you know, are, are they better than you or are you better right. than them? But, um, you know, we've got to communicate and, and do our job up front so that Jordan has time because sometimes those man routes are a little bit longer routes. Right. So we've got to make sure that we hold up, but um, you know, that it's a great opportunity for us as an offense. Uh, it's a great challenge and you got to answer the bell. Absolutely. So speaking about answering the bell, Spartan fans, we really hope you can come out this Saturday. It is a noon kickoff. You definitely want to get here at least by 1030. There's going to be tailgating going on. There's a whole host of things that are going on. I had a chance to talk to some of the folks that are putting all this on. I uh, just love what, you know, MBU Communications and, and, some, and the alumni are doing. I mean, it's really going to be such a fanfare here at Spartan Field this, at noon this Saturday. Um, so we'd love to have you here. If you're not, you can definitely check us out again on the Spartan Digital Network as Kevin Paulson and I will be on the call. So hope to see all of you here at Spartan Field this Saturday at noon for Coach B. I'm Guy Danhoff. We want to thank you for watching it all right here on the Spartan Digital Network.